Hello, Saints. Um, I want to share something that uh, I, f I found doing my own research as I tried to understand what it means to be made in the image of God. I have an online uh, Bible, CD-ROM, and on that, I, I love that online Bible. I've had it for, I think, over, over 10 years or so. And uh, it's, it's really wonderful. And it contains all the commentaries of some of the greatest Christian um, leaders and writers, um, such as Matthew Henry, Charles Spurgeon, John Gill, um, Albert Barnes, uh, Jameson, uh, Jameson, Fawcett, and uh, Brown. So I have the commentaries of these things on the online Bible. And in this video, I want to share what Matthew Henry said about uh, about being made in the image of God and to show that all three persons of the Godhead are in, were involved in creation. And, uh, and, I, and I'm going to say one more time, if you believe what this precious book says, that we worship one God in three distinct divine persons, everything makes sense by the power of the Holy Spirit. And if you believe that satanic logic of Brian Denlinger when he when he says that the, that Jesus is the body, the Father is the soul, the Holy Spirit being the Spirit, you're going to be messed up like he is, hands down. So right now, without further ado, I'm going to read what Matthew Henry said in his commentary on Genesis 1.26. And before I do, I'm going to read it again. I'm sure you heard it uh, from... Denlinger as he read it in his video so I'll read it here and God said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth so here's what Matthew Henry said in his commentary Man was to be a creature different from all that had been hitherto made. Flesh and spirit, heaven and earth, must be put together in him, and he must be allied to both worlds. And therefore God himself not only undertakes to make him, but is pleased, to, pleased so to express himself as if he called a council to consider of the making of him. Let us make man, let, let us make man, excuse me. The three persons of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, consult about it and concur in it, because man, when he was made, was to be dedicated and devoted to Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Into that great name we are, with good reason, baptized, for to that great name we owe our being. Let him rule man who said, let us make man. What did Jesus said before he ascended into heaven? Matthew 28, 19, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. The Apostle John said, for, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. If you believe and accept the clear teachings of the Bible that presents the Trinity as Father, Son, Holy Spirit, three distinct divine persons, one God, everything makes sense. All three persons of the Godhead were involved in creation. The Father, let me do this right, the Father being the originator, the Son being the agent, and the Holy Spirit is the administrator or the applicator. All three persons were there in, in the beginning at creation. And it was God the Father who said, let us make man in our image. I believe, looking at that, and from what Matthew Henry said, the Father was talking to the other two persons of the Godhead. Do you see how stupid Denlinger's logic of Jesus being the body, the Father being the soul, the Holy Spirit being the spirit really is? Really stupid, man, because he don't believe it. He don't believe what 
the, what the King James Bible says about one God and three distinct divine persons. And you, and you know what's the amazing thing about it? It is so crystal clear in Scripture. Five-year-old child can understand that. Moving on. That man was made in God's image and after his likeness, two words to express the same thing and making each other the more expressive. Image and likeness denote the likest image, the nearest resemblance of any of the visible creatures. Man was not made in the likeness of any creature that went before him, but in the likeness of his creator. Yet still between God and man, there is an infinite distance. Christ is Christ only is the express image of God's person as the son of his father as the son of his father that's what Matthew Henry said I'll read it again Christ only is the express image of God's person as the son of his father having the same nature. This is why we Trinitarians believe the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. Does that make three gods? No! No! The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. You can't separate them. You cannot isolate them. They are one. One in essence, one in unity, one in purpose, one in relationship. And Matthew Henry said Jesus Christ, the expression of God's person, as the son of his father. What did Jesus say in John chapter 14, verse 9 to 11? He that had seen me had seen the father. Does that make Jesus Christ the father? No. Oh no, oh, that is heresy, satanic heresy. No, Jesus is saying that he is the image of the invisible God. You want to know what God looks like? Look at me. For the Father is in me, and I'm in the Father. Folks, there's, the, there's an inseparable union between the Father and the Son. That, that's, that's, that's all that Jesus was saying. They're one in essence. Are they the same person? No. They're two distinct divine per divine person of the Godhead, and yet they're one. They're one. And what Daniel don't understand is that when we put our faith, when we believe the gospel and put our trust in Jesus Christ, we're united with the Godhead. The fullness, the, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit dwell in us. To be in Christ is to be in the Father and to be in the Spirit. And if, if you follow Daniel's logic saying that when he said that Jesus is the Father, okay, um, uh, we're supposed to reveal Jesus Christ to the watching world. Does that make us Jesus Christ? No. No. Do you see how stupid his logic is? And furthermore, Jesus said in these last days, many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ. And deceive many. No, my brothers and sisters in Christ, when G Jesus clearly revealed the Father through his miracles and his teachings, he is not the Father. He's the Son of the Father. And because he is the Son of the Father, that makes him God. What God begets is God, just as what man begets is man. So because the Father is God, Jesus Christ is God because he is his son. We don't worship two gods. We worship one God and three distinct divine persons. There's an inseparable union between three persons of the Godhead. So simple. Five or six-year-old child can understand that. Moving on. Uh, let's see. It is only some of God's honor that is put upon man who is God's image only as the shadow in the glass or the king's impress upon the coin. God's image upon man consists in three things. Number one, in his nature and constitution, not those of his body, for God has not a body, but those of his soul, 
This honor indeed God has put upon the body of man that the word was made flesh. The Son of God, or God the Son, was clothed with a body like ours and will shortly clothe ours with a glory like that of His. And this we may safely say that He by whom God made the worlds, not only the great world, but man the little world, formed the human body at the first according to the platform He designed for Himself in the fullness of time. But it is the soul, the great soul of man, that does especially bear God's image. The soul is a spirit, an intelligent, immortal spirit, an influencing active spirit, herein resembling God, the father of spirits, and the soul of the world. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. The soul of man, considered in its three noble faculties, understanding, will, and active power, is perhaps the brightest, clearest looking glass in nature we're in to see God. So yeah, we're made in the image of God because we have intellect, we have understanding, we have a will, and we, we make active choices. So yeah, we're made in the image of God, absolutely. Number two, in his place and authority. Let us make man in our image and let him have dominion. As he has the government of the inferior creatures, he is, as it were, God's representative or viceroy upon earth. They are not capable of fearing and serving God, therefore God has appointed them to fear and serve man. Yet his government of himself by the freedom of his will has in it more of God's image than his government of the creatures. And number three in his purity and rectitude. God's image upon man consists in knowledge, righteousness, and true holiness that's ephesians 4 24 and colossians 3 verse 10. he was upright ecclesiastes 7 verse 29. he had an habitual conformity of all his natural powers to the whole will of god his understanding saw divine things clearly and truly and there were no errors nor mistakes in his knowledge his will complied readily and universally with the will of god without reluctancy or resistance his affections were all regular and he had no inordinate appetites or passions. His thoughts were easily brought and fixated to the best subjects, and there was no vanity nor ungovernableness in them. All the inferior powers were subject to the dictates and directions of the superior without any mutiny or rebellion. Thus holy, thus happy were our first parents in having the image of God upon them. And this honor put upon man at first is a good reason why we should not speak ill of one another, James 3 verse 9, nor do ill one to another, Genesis 9 and verse 6. And a good reason why uh, we should not debase ourselves to the service of sin and why we should devote ourselves to God's service. But how art thou fallen, O son of the morning? How is this image of God upon man defaced? How small the remains of it, and how great the ruins of it. The Lord renew it upon our souls by a sanctifying grace. And uh, we know that when Jesus Christ died for us, he, he, he made us new creatures. When, when, we, when we believe the gospel and put our faith in Christ, we become new creatures. And, um, and this we'll be, we'll, be, we'll be made new, we'll have new perfect bodies. And uh, for now, um, we're supposed to uh, resemble, since we're children of God by faith in Christ, we're supposed to resemble the Father. And, uh, and we're supposed to reveal Jesus Christ. So I hope and pray, so Matthew Henry definitely confirms that we're, in terms of our intellect, in terms of our capacity to make choices, um, and, and the fact that we were created to have relationship yeah, we are created in the image of God. And uh, I said in my last video, yeah, man is a trinity made up of body, soul, and spirit. But God is a trinity, but here's the big, big difference. God is not a solitary being. He's a triune being, he exists as Father, Son, Holy Spirit, three distinct divine persons. And if, and the message here is that, it, again, if you believe what the King James Bible says about this, about the 
the Bible doctrine of the Trinity, by the power of the Holy Spirit, things will make sense. If you believe that satanic logic of Brian Denlinger, you'll be messed up. So I pray that what you heard today has been a blessing to you, and um, I welcome your feedback, your comments. Please let me know what you think. And um, thank you for taking the time to watch the video. God bless you all. And until the next one, God willing, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.